I'm gonna tell you the story of how we got married within eight months of meeting. Grew up Christian. What is the word I'm looking for? Um, so I walk in the gym, I've never, let me tell you something. Let, let me tell you something, let me tell you something. Hello, hello, welcome or welcome back to the channel. Today I wanna have a sit down with you and just chat about marriage, love, a little bit of dating. Basically just tell you the story of how I prayed for a husband, a very specific thing that I was asking the Lord for. I met that person and he actually surpassed everything that I hoped and dreamed to have in the person that I would would marry someday. So sit back, relax if you are on a commute, if you're driving, enjoy the ride. Let's just chat, grab your water, your tea, your coffee, your drink, whatever it is you want. And I'm gonna tell you the story and all of the things and how we got married within eight months of meeting. Let's take it way back. So around the age of, I would say, 17. You know, when you're in high school, it's like 15, like 14, 15, 16. Sure, people have boyfriends and girlfriends and blah, blah, blah. But it wasn't until I was about 17 that I seriously started to think about who I would end up with someday. I don't know if that's young or old. Or, or what, but around this time, I remember Taylor Swift was getting, it was like her time. It was like 15, Fearless, all those love songs. I feel like that made me a romantic, a hopeless romantic, if you will, because I kind of grew up in the Taylor Swift era. I would see marriages around me all the time at church. I grew up heavily involved in my church. I grew up Christian, tons of marriages around me, starting with my parents. They have now been married 31 years. Got me thinking at about 17, who am I gonna marry? You know, what is gonna be the deal here? And I wanna say it was at the age of about 19 to 20. I literally sat down one day, grabbed a notebook, and I wrote down a list of non-negotiables. This is something my mom always taught me. She was like, you always wanna have a list of non-negotiables in the person you wanna marry. You're gonna meet tons of guys, but if you have your list of non-negotiables, it's gonna become easier for you to determine, is this the guy for me or not? Thank you, mom, for that. That was so, so helpful. But here I am, 19 and 20 years old, writing down a list of the things that I wanted in my future husband. So I wrote things like, like, I want him to love God above everything else. That was the first thing I wrote, even more than me, which sounds weird, but the truth is if your person loves God more than anything in the whole world, that's not gonna steer him wrong. <laughs> that's going to show him how to love you the way Christ loves his church. So it's all, it's kind of like a full circle thing. I just want him to love you, Lord, with all of his heart and his might and serve you and seek you and all the things. So number one was having the same beliefs, faith, as me. Another thing I wrote was I want him to care about his health and fitness. I want him to take that serious. I want him to eat well, exercise, and just be interested in that whole world because I have always been. And I want him to be business savvy, like a businessman, business forward, forward thinking about personal growth. Looking back, I'm like, wow, I was really bold. I feel like I was very bold in asking, making this list for God. I'm not gonna bore you with every single thing I put, but it was a lot of things down to physical things, to I want him to make me laugh, want to feel like the most special person in the world, when I'm around him and be so in love. What is the word I'm looking for? Um... I guess you could say infatuated, not take life too serious. So all of these things, I wrote them down and I would pray about it. And I think my husband just got home. Sorry guys, I went to greet him and I told him I'm filming a video, so let's keep talking. Guys, when I tell you I completely trusted in God, like blindly, I completely trusted in God blindly. Kind of like a trust fall on this one. I did grow up in a church that was very, very strict. I was saved in that church and everything, and that was great, but I really didn't see myself marrying into that church and like carrying on that lifestyle, having a family within that church, and that was a little bit... It's not like they ever told me my parents or anything like, oh, I'm, you're required to marry within this church. No, they didn't at all. Like, nobody did, but it was almost kind of like expected. Like, you date the guys in your church type of vibe so I literally told the Lord I don't know but the desire of my heart is someone outside of this someone completely unexpected but meets all of these things on my list my criteria the Bible 
going to say, asking you shall receive. God will grant you the desires of your heart. All There's tons of verses. Praying without ceasing. Guys, it, it works. I prayed for years, you know? I met my husband when I was 24. In retrospect, it doesn't seem like that long, you know, four to five years. However, when you're in it, like when you're in that waiting season, sometimes it seemed like maybe I'll never meet my Prince Charming. Maybe it is silly to dream and hope for a love like this, or is it too much? Maybe? Am I asking for too much? I remember I had some friends and they would tell me, I think you're a little bit picky. I never once brought a guy home and told my parents like, this is my boyfriend. Of course, I went on dates. I did date people and stuff like that, but I never did have like a serious boyfriend. My dad was also very strict, so I was very careful with who I brought around. When I was 24, I actually got set up by one of my aunts. So at this time, it was post-college. I was already in the workforce. I was working a nine to five. This was back in 2016. My aunt told me about her CrossFit coach. Honey, I have a guy for you. I'm like, oh, I'm okay, because I'm living in Fort Worth, Texas at the time. She lives in Orange County, like California, and so her trainer is obviously from California. We were actually on vacation in Mexico, and she told me about this guy that would be perfect perfect for me. He loves the Lord. He loves business. He's an entrepreneur. Like he has a business, tall, handsome, fit, all these things. Right. I'm like, wow. Like, I mean, sounds great on paper, but who would want a long distance relationship? She's like, well, listen, I know you guys are going to come visit in December of this year. So December of 2016, I was like, awesome. Sure. We'll revisit when I come visit. So six months pass. December rolls around, I come to California and she takes my brothers and I to CrossFit, to a CrossFit class to try it out. I had never tried CrossFit in my whole life before. So we walk into the gym. At this point, I'm like pretty nervous. Like, I don't really know what to expect, but my aunt is hyping this up so much that I'm like, okay, should I actually be nervous or? I feel like there's pressure on the situation. Little did I know, she had actually been telling my now husband for months, months before I even met him, she would be like, your future wife's coming in three months, like your future wife's coming in two months, just like telling the whole gym, telling him. <laughs> Thank God I didn't know this, but like everybody knew the situation. Everybody knew, but I didn't know. Thank goodness, I would have been even more nervous. So I walk in the gym, I've never, let me tell you something. Let's, let me tell you something, let me tell you something. I've never been nervous around a guy before. I've never felt like smitten or like love at first sight. I walked in that gym and my now husband, his name's Jonathan, Jonathan walks over to me, to my brother, so introduces himself. He's like, hello, I'm Jonathan Palmer. Welcome to CrossFit Saved, happy you're here. I was like, uh-huh, like, oh my God, he's hot. Like he's hot. I was like, what's happening? What is happening to me? I'm like, it's really hot in here now. That was the first sign for me. I'm like, I love you. But like, I just met you. Like what? Crazy. Very much love at first sight. I know that sounds super mushy, whatever, you know, like romantic, but it's so true and it happened to me and I can vouch for that whole thing. Love at first sight thing, cause it's, it's real, it could happen to you. Just saying. Didn't think it happened to me, but it did. So I do the class, I work out, and I'm like nervous the whole time. I'm like, is he looking at me? Am I squatting okay? <laughs> So the workout's over. Very challenging workout. I pushed myself. I wanted to impress John, of course. Afterwards, we were all gonna go to breakfast together down the road, like two minutes from the gym. So here I am. Um, I think I was on Snapchat at the time, posting where I was, and I went outside to, to take a picture of the gym name. When I come back inside, uh, where is my aunt and my siblings and my cousin that I came with? And he was like, oh, I guess they left. And I was like, my aunt really orchestrated. She was working it, working the situation. And I was like, well, now I don't have a ride to breakfast. So I tell John, super shy, like embarrassed. And he was like, Guess why don't you pull my phone? Here's the thing. Here's a little sidebar for you. You know how sometimes like you get a weird vibe from like guys that are like, ooh, let me get your number or ooh, hey girl, flirty, but you don't know their intentions, super sus. John was not like that. He was super professional, super straightforward, serious because he's working. He wasn't there to flirt. And now I'm like even more interested. <laughs> we look back and we laugh at this so much because it, it is really pretty hilarious. That entire two to three minute drive to breakfast, I, 
I lost my marbles. I lost my cool card. In my head, I'm like, this is an interview. I need to make an impression on him because I'm flying back to Texas tomorrow. It's the last day of 2016. This is my only shot. Like, I could never see this guy again. So on that ride, I was like, my name is Claudia. I went to school for business. I have a bachelor's in marketing and management. I work in inside sales. Like, girl. <laughs> my elevator pitch or something like he was gonna hire me to be his like wife or something i'm like and before i knew it he arrived because it was not far he did not get to say a word it's like driving like laughing a little bit I was trying not to look desperate but it was very desperate <laughs> so we get to the place all of the gym members are there that day the 31st summer 31st is my dad's birthday so this piece of the story is important and i'm going to tell you why in a second so basically when we got to the restaurant i didn't get to sit next to john i sat with like my family we were like super far apart and i was like well i guess i don't really i'm not gonna get to talk to him again because i don't think i want to see him again i told my cousin he asked for my number totally give it to him i guess we'll see what ends up happening Happening. I go back home back at my corporate job at this point three days had passed I was like okay well I guess he's not gonna text me I'm at my desk working away when my phone goes off and I have a text message and it's an unknown number and I look Girl. it was Jonathan hello this is Jonathan Palmer from CrossFit Saved it was a pleasure to meet you I was like we're in baby like we're in because this guy would not be texting me knowing dang well i live 1200 miles away from him i've never been so happy to see a guy text me before we start texting and i was like we're not gonna text like we could totally facetime he was like what i've never done that like i don't have time like literally this guy would just eat sleep run his business and he had a meal prep business too which later on i took over but he was like okay i guess we could do that facetime so we start facetiming every day and because of that we really developed a great relationship as far as our communication so he's like okay so when am i gonna see you again this is january of 2017 and i'm like well i'm thinking like a student uh maybe like summer <laughs> he's like i was thinking valentine's day i was like oh my god that's next month like i just saw you a month ago he's like well yeah i want to see you again and so he flies out to fort worth gets a hotel all the things and i'm like oh my gosh this guy's like serious he's like invested he's interested i'm like this is amazing on that trip is when he told me so i had been really really praying to meet my future wife he was sensing that the lord was saying that he was gonna meet his future wife in 2016 but just meet her people around him were saying you should go out you should go to bars you should do this you should do that to like try to put yourself out there and meet girls he's like no i'm really believing the lord will bring me my wife Guys. literally the lord hand delivered to his door the last day of 2016 and that's all we it was just we just met we didn't even sit together at the restaurant we just met we didn't hang out later and then i went back home we just met what i'm telling you god is in control he listens to your desires and he knows what's best for you have patience don't take the shortcut don't take what feels good in the moment trust the lord wait on him because you will reap the biggest reward okay month two he was like my intention is to marry you you let me know and i was like <laughs> In my head, I'm like, I'm down. I'm just a little bit worried about what my family is gonna say. So we were going back and forth like once a month. I would come to California, then he would go to Texas. My battery's about to die, oh my gosh. So Labor Day, 2017, he flew out. He asked for my dad's permission to marry me. My dad says yes. We end up eloping two weeks later and then we have our full on wedding three months later. So we eloped on October 2nd, 2017. And then we had our big ceremony wedding, December 2nd of 2017. It's gonna be five years in a few weeks five years you guys best five years of my life now we have a baby on the way i don't want to get emotional on here because that's not what this is about i'm so sorry my camera died we're at the end of the video at the end of this part of the story i'm not a relationship advice giver i'm not telling you what to do or anything like that it's just me sharing the power of faith and prayer and patience and trusting god that's really all this is i feel like my marriage is my favorite story to tell because it is a testimony to how good God is. I'm just the happiest person. Sure, we have our bumps in the road and miscommunications and quirks and we annoy each other, which is all good, good and normal. Just really wanted to share and document how I met my husband. And that is just my story. If you would like to share with me, because I love love, I love hearing every story is so different, so unique. 
If you have a cool story on how you met your significant other, please leave it in the comments and we could chat on there. I would love to hear it. Anyway, that was all. This was a story time. I hope you enjoyed it. If you like these type of videos, like story time, sit down, chatty videos, let me know too in the comments. Please consider liking and subscribing and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye!